and the community builder for Wellswood in Torbay. And today is your chance to find out everything you've ever wanted to know about ABCD or asset based community development. We are from Aging Well at Torbay Community Development Trust. Um, Aging Well is a seven year lottery funded program to bring people together and reduce isolation in people over 50 in Torbay. And today we will have um, a presentation um, from Tracy Kabash uh, for uh, 15 minutes about what is ABCD and how we've been working with our community builders with that in Torbay. Then um, we are going to have um, Frank speak for a couple of minutes about his experience as somebody um, involved with the Aging Well programme. And then we are going to go into breakout rooms with a community builder. So we've got nine community builders for 10, including me here today. And uh, Frank will also be in a breakout room uh, that you will go to where you'll have the chance to ask a community builder about asset-based community development in action. Um, that will be for five minutes. And then Melanie Brooks, our evaluation partners from Syrio at the University of Plymouth will talk to us for about 10 minutes about um, what they've discovered about what we've been doing through their research. And then there'll be five minutes of questions at the end. So if you have any questions, please could you just pop those in the chat box um, and then we will um, answer as many as we can um, in the five minutes at the end. And those we can't answer, uh, Vicky will um, send on to us and she'll get the answers back and send on to you. So uh, without um, further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Tracy Kabash, who was the um, community builder manager for the first six years of the programme and who is now Operations Director at Tool Bay Community Development Trust. Thank you, Marianne. I'm hoping people can hear and see me. Um, so perhaps just uh, uh, we've got some slides that we're going to share over the next uh, few minutes. Um, and as Marianne said, there'll be some um, opportunities a bit further in the session for some questions and, and some further engagement. I'll apologise in advance because we've got a tremendous amount of learning um, that we've, uh, we've gained over the last six years. So I'm going to be throwing lots of concepts at you, lots of words, but hopefully we'll have a bit of time to unpack some of that as we go on. Um, before we start, I just wanted to give a little bit of background of Torbay. Um, some of you may have heard of it. It's, it's rather elegantly described as the English Riviera sometimes. We're on the, on the coast down in Devon, uh, made up of three towns, Torquay, Paynton and Brixham. But like many coastal towns in the UK, we've got some serious challenges that over the last sort of four decades, you know, the economy hasn't been kind to us and we've had had lots of things to, to deal with, I suppose you might, um, might describe. We have deprivation in our towns. Um, we have 45% uh, of our population are over 50. Uh, we have higher than average uh, numbers of people with long-term long illnesses and conditions. We have higher than average numbers of children in care. So some real social challenges. And as, a, as an area, there's been quite a bit of investment recently and our, our physical spaces are, are improving. But what we've been focused on over the last six years is the people in those spaces. How can we make the quality of life better for people in today and particularly those that are, are over 50? So that's a little bit of context. Um, I think Vicky is going to be moving my slides. So Vicky, if you could give me the first of the next slide, sorry, that would be great, thank you. Lovely. OK, so we're going to talk to you about asset based community development and co-production. So this slide is just to give you a little bit of a view of how we feel that fits in um, to sort of the wider environment that we're working in. And this slide has been borrowed by uh, from uh, a very inspiring gentleman called Cormac Russell, who some of you may have heard of from Nurture Development, who is really spearheading asset based community development across the world. Um, and also from Martin Simon, who we work alongside. And Martin Simon is um, somebody who set up time banking in the UK and also works um, on asset based community development and is a mentor for our community builders. So when we were thinking about where does asset based community development fit, 
Um, this is the diagram that they shared with us that took us on our journey. Um, and it's something that I find very useful to explain to people how the work that we're doing is a little bit different. So um, the deficit uh, sort of medical model, most of you will be very familiar with. That's where most of our statutory organisations are sitting and they tend to think, do things to the people. And that's absolutely right. They're professionals. Um, you wouldn't kind of want somebody from the community doing your heart surgery, would you? You'd want a surgeon. But that part of our society has grown very large over a number of years. Um, and I think probably our communities have felt that they um, that those those people in that part of society are responsible for everything. And it's kind of made our culture a little bit um, a little bit laid back and a little bit less responsive to the things that are going on in our own community. We work very well with our statutory organisations locally, but we also challenge them to say what really needs to be done by you and what actually can be done by the community themselves. We also have in Torbay um, the charity model as well. So we have got lots of formal voluntary sector organisations. We've got over 500 in the, in the Bay at the moment. And the charity model for us uh, is very, very crucial, but the charity model um, encapsulates organisations that do for people. So we've got the, the, the medical, the, the deficits, the statutory, doing two people, solving problems. You've got the charities doing four people. Where we felt in Torbay we needed to really expand and develop was in the bottom half of this, of this uh, square that you can see, which is one with co-production, so doing things with people. Um, our, our community have been felt very done to for many years and also from the people. So our asset-based approach is very much grounded in people doing in their own communities what they feel is the right thing. And actually for us, we found that that's the only way to make any kind of sustainable change um, in, in any kind of community. So just to give you a sense of that, that was where we started our journey, asset-based community development, working in co-production. Next slide, please, Vicky. So asset-based community development, what's different about that? Um, we focus on what's strong, not what's wrong. So we don't ignore the fact that we've got challenges, but actually we go into a community and focus on what's great. <coughs> and our experience has been twofold with that. One, it's we found that people embrace us more. Um, I used to work uh, for our local council as a community development manager for a number of years, and we were very good at going into communities and sharing indices of multiple deprivation, I'm sure you're familiar with them, and telling people that if they lived in this neighbourhood, they were going to die seven years earlier than their neighbours um, just across the road. Funny enough, that didn't inspire people to get involved with what we wanted to do. But when you actually go into a community and, and look at what's strong in there, that is that really unlocks the potential. We never do for others what they can do for themselves. Um, and that is hard because we are all um, people that want to, to help and we're all people that want to solve problems. But actually we have to really be careful that we don't step into that space, which is quite rightfully the communities. We've stopped being responsible for the community and we've started being responsive to it. Um, and we intentionally connect people in places and we bring our whole selves to that, um, to that community. So we have a number of community builders and I'll talk more about those in a minute. And they all do their community building in a different way. And they bring not just their community development skills, they bring their life skills, they bring their own wisdom, their own skills and their own experience. And they meet with people as equals. They don't have uniforms, they don't wear lanyards. They're just people in the community. When we work in a community, we also aim from the outset to step back. And, um, and traditionally charities find that quite hard to do. We are based within a charity, but we need to make sure that everything that we're doing doesn't rely upon us. So we're creating something, we're creating an energy, we're creating momentum that actually can last way beyond our involvement. And we believe that every community has what it needs when it shares what it has. And our communities, the way we've worked in Torbay has been geographical, we've done it on a neighbourhood basis, but actually these principles can work in any kind of community, whether that's a virtual one, one based on an issue, one based on a campaign. Uh, next slide, Vicky, please. So how did we do it? We did it with community builders. And I think the biggest lesson we would share for anybody who wants to embrace asset-based community development is that actually you need a community builder in the mix using existing structures, using existing people, um, makes it very, very much harder. So um, we've had over the six years, we've had between 14 to 15 full-time equivalent community builders working across Torbay. They also work as time bank brokers, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. We've got 30 neighbourhoods, it's 130,000 population. So that just gives you a bit of an idea. We're working in communities with around sort of five to 8,000 people per builder. 
Um, why did we do this? Um, this was an ageing well programme, so this was about reducing isolation amongst older people. But actually, we felt that the isolation amongst the elders within our community was an older person's issue. It was a community issue. So we embraced this, this challenge, if you like, very much as a, as a whole community challenge. Uh, next slide, please, Vicky. What do community builders do? OK, so they build trust, and that sometimes takes a considerable amount of time. Uh, in some communities, that took us our whole first year, actually. They start conversations in the community and they find the passion that's there. They identify the connectors. So every community has them. They're the people that just instinctively get people together. They know what's going on. You'll find them in some formal structures. Um, you'll also find that they're the, in the local shops having a chat. And they're the engine for us, actually. They're the doers in that community. And if we can work with them, then you can actually massively move a community forward. We map the assets in the community and by assets, we don't just mean physical things. Quite often people think about that as buildings and spaces and places, but for us, the assets are the people as well. So they're the individuals, um, they're the groups that come together, there's their individual skills. And we physically do that. We physically go into a community, get a very large, big piece of paper and get everybody to write all the things that they know are in their community that are there to be shared. We remove barriers. So I talked a little bit earlier about the fact that we've got apathy in some of our communities. We've got um, feelings that actually if there's something wrong that somebody else has to fix it for people. And we also have some very strong um, kind of community leaders and other organizations that like to control what's going on in the community. So a lot of our work is around removing those barriers. Sometimes those barriers are there for good intention, they're for health and safety reasons, um, but we look for ways of actually um, reducing the, the restrictions that might be in a community that enables people just to get on and do with what, what they want to do. And a lot of the time we're really giving people permission. Um, people want to do things, but they kind of feel they need to ask somebody. And a lot of the time we're just saying, yeah, just go on with it. We probably don't actually have any um, legal uh, responsibilities or legal um, authority to do that, but we just encourage people and, um, and, and give them that opportunity just to go where they feel their community needs them to go. We mobilise resources, so sometimes people need um, a little bit of funding or a little bit of support and we mobilise that. We link in our isolated older people as all of that activity is going on because that's one of our key priorities in the area and we enable local people to take control. What we don't do, and I think my little no-do sign has come up on Bob the Builder, is we don't do that for people. We don't do the building. We do the facilitating and we do the empowering so that the community builds themselves. We also, by the way, don't mend fences and do practical things like that, even though we were asked to do that probably for the first year of our programme. Uh, next slide, Wendy. Oh, sorry, Nick, Vicky. <laughs> Why are we doing all of this? Um, when we started our process of engaging with older people in the Bay, um, we found that they wanted some really obvious things, things that were obvious to them, but perhaps weren't obvious to um, some of the organisations that have been working with older people for quite a while. They were asked if they could be reconnected back into their local neighbourhoods. That's where they wanted to be. They wanted to have value and purpose. They wanted to have higher aspirations for later life. They didn't want to be seen as a drain on their local communities and their local area. They wanted to be recognised for what they could offer. And they also wanted the perception of older people in Torbay to be more positive. Um, I had a lovely conversation with a, a very elderly woman when we first started our programme. And she said to me, quietly took me to one side at some event and said, I really want it to be like it was in the war. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> what she actually meant is people helped each other out in the war, whether it's the First World War or the Second World War, they knew each other, the communities were there for each other. And that's what she wanted back in her neighborhood. Uh, next slide, Vicky, please. So the other thing to mention is we're not panacea. So community builders can't do everything. In our program, it's a one million pound a year program and 50% of those funds um, go into community builders. So we are the bedrock. Um, but we work alongside all of these other um, local provisions, so whether that's wellbeing coordinators who help us with people that have got a few um, blockages that have, you know, things that need to be, have some specialist support. We have specialists on finance, on mental health, we work closely with our adult social care team. And we also have some very empowering local bodies that um, voice uh, what world people want in the Bay. And we'll hear from one of the members of those in just one second. I'm gonna speed up because I think I'm running out of time. Next slide. Numbers. <coughs> 
We found over 1,400 connectors in our community over the last six years. We've worked 1,700 isolated older people, stimulated 300 system-led actions or activities, the so things that we've helped people create to do together. We have a time bank, which is a more formalized system for people who like to actually count the number of hours they're doing things for each other. We've got 500 members on that. who have exchanged over 15,000 hours. And we've seen a shift. Um, um, a bit later on, you'll hear more from our evaluator, Mel, who'll tell you about our statistics. But one of the ones we wanted to share with you is the fact that we are measured um, by a scale of isolation, the work that we do. That's done through a series of questionnaires filled in by some of the people we're working with. And that, that scale has um, goes from one to six, with six is where you are feeling uh, very isolated and one you're not so. Um, we've had a reduction in the people that we're working with from 3.6 to 2.6 in our community building activities. And that's been quite a, a positive reduction. Our wider Aging Well programme has seen a reduction of 0.6 and the overall programmes across the whole country spun, uh, funded by Aging Better uh, has been 0.3. So one of the reasons we want to share some of our experiences because we seem to be pay, taking people on a, on a longer journey um, and that's something that we're deeply proud of. And just a couple of slides on some of our lessons that you can pick up um, in the breakout groups, if you would, Vicky. We can help people build their community, but we can't do it for them. Building trust, confidence and belief takes time. When connectors create activities and groups, friendships grow and people get the support they need from each other in our experience. If we connect the right people and places together, then the activities run themselves. You don't have to be there. It has a life of its own. We always go where the energy is. We respect existing groups, but we don't expect anything from them. Uh, second slide. We signpost to agencies, but we don't get swamped by them. Uh, we have to make sure that we push back um, in some of those areas. As I mentioned before, time banking gives a little bit more structure to some of those individuals that need that when they're helping in the community. Accept serendipity when it comes your way. It's an absolute beautiful thing and learn to trust it. No one thing works in uh, in all areas and we have to respond to where you are. People are not linear. They may start somewhere. You may move them forward. They may come back again. And above all, make it fun. Please make it fun. Okay. And, um, just one last section, if you wouldn't mind. Um, people say yeah. for us, uh, it feels different now that we have our groups of life. My cat will orchestrate that then. That will be okay. Oh, I've got somebody interviewing. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. She'll tell us what we need to do. That's fine. Together, I just wanted to mention it now. I, I said spaces to Ashley, I can see improving. it coming up and it just doesn't look... Reduced isolation, uh, we've got that amongst older people and also interestingly it has equipped us for COVID and just to conclude on that because that has taken us to a very different world. Um, our last slide please Vicky. Can you hear me Vicky? <laughs> Good. Uh, we created a helpline during COVID using all of the things that we've learned through community building. And we had a one call, a number. Basically, we had a very simple idea. We knew there were lots of people in our community that were gonna need help. We knew there were lots of people that wanted to offer help. So people rang this number and we matched people up. The community builders sat there and matched people, people that needed shopping or prescriptions. We matched them with organizations that could provide mental health support. Really interestingly for us, we found of the three and a half thousand people that have been helped by that helpline, only 7% of them had worked with us previously. And that for us was a really strong indication that the networks and the things that we had built up through our community building were making people safe. They had people to go to. They didn't need the helpline. And uh, I think I'll finish there. Thank you. We are gonna have questions later. Um, as Marianne said, please put those into the chat line. And now I'll hand you back to Marianne who will take us through the next stage. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so next, I'd like to introduce Frank Y. Um, he's on the Aging Well Programme Board. He's also on TOFA, Torbay Over 50s Assembly, and the Aging Well Festival Committee. His wife died uh, about six years ago, and he's been involved with Aging Well ever since. And he's going to speak for a couple of minutes about his experience of working with Torbay Community Builders. Over to you, Frank. Hi, good morning. Well, I ne it never occurred to me to volunteer for, for any charity before I retired and before my wife died. And, and there's one other charity within Torbay where I drive people to hospitals and the like. And I was astonished at the number of isolated people there are that we're just totally unaware of, that cannot get out of their homes. And the key to these people has turned out to be 
the community builders. I got involved with my local community builder, I don't know, a good few years ago and drive people to, well, before the pandemic anyway, drive people to, to various events because they need, I guess I'll be classed as an asset in this sense, they need people to get these, to get these people to events and to be friendly with them. And the community builder, in my opinion, is the key to all of this in getting these isolated people back into society. And there's a lot of them. And I don't think we're really aware of just how many there are. So it's a real key to the future. And this pandemic has made it 10 times worse. That's me finished. That's all I need to say. They're essential to the, the future of isolated people, in my view. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Um, so next, we are going to go to breakout rooms. And uh, this is your chance to um, meet with a community builder from Torbay and ask a community builder about asset based community development in action. Um, so there's, there's going to be nine community builders and Frank, who you will be able to go to and talk to for five minutes. Any questions you don't get the chance to ask, please put them in the chat and hopefully we'll have time to answer those later. So, Vicky, are you ready? Um, I am ready. Okay, right, let's go, see what happens. It would be interesting to hear some good open questions that community builders use to start conversations. Um, are you, would you be okay to answer that question, Nina? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so um, I think my my ideas for this one um, is that when I meet somebody new in the community, I would probably start a conversation with something like, um, what do you like about living here? And, you know, that's not a yes or no um, question at all. So they have to um, have a quite a long conversation about why they like to live there. Um, and also to inquire about what people like to do in their spare time, you know, what are their hobbies? And finding out um, what they've done for a job in the past as well. And then I usually get on to talk about their sort of close neighbourhood and, and say, do you know your neighbour very well? Do you know your neighbours? Um, do you see your neighbours very often? And it's sort of all around neighbourhood type conversations, but I usually find that one of those would get somebody talking for quite a while. I hope that's answered your question. Thank you, Nina. Lovely. And uh, now I'd like to um, give one of the questions to Tracy, if that's okay. Um, if you had a magic wand, what would you do? What are your dreams of the community? I think that was an example of an opening question, Marianne. <laughs> I might be wrong. Uh, who, who, was it Joe? I don't know if Joe's still here. Joe, I can see Joe Francis is still here. I think Joe was offering that as, um, as an opening question, which sounds like a lovely, lovely example, Joe. <laughs> However, if I had a magic wand, <laughs> what would I do? I would, I would, um, spend a considerable amount of time going around the country spreading our learning and encouraging people to have community builders and I, I know um you know there's always been a comment up here are there any in Birmingham not that I'm aware of but I do know that there are some of the organizations that um that work in aging better program in in Birmingham are quite interested in this um and gradually there's a network that's building around the country Close to us, we have community builders now in Exeter. There's a strong um, history of community builders up in Scotland. So it is gradually moving across the country. Um, but yes, if I had a magic wand, I'd try and make sure they were everywhere. Can I, can I um, jump in there actually? Yes, it was an idea of an open question, but I think <laughs> it, it would lead on very well from the, from the questions that were put forward, asking about what the strengths of the area are anyway, why they like living there, and then what would you do if you had a magic wand? So they build on each other, don't they? They do. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, so um, I, did we answer the question about how to, how do we measure well-being? Did 
Mel answered that question, I thought so great. Okay, so thank you. So if there aren't um, any more questions, um, then um, yeah, I'd also like to add to um, Vilma's, um, uh, no, Sharda's question about Birmingham as well, that um, we are currently um, in the middle of devising training um, for ABCD. Um, so uh, yeah, so get in touch with us um, because uh, this is what we will be offering um, and a, a chance to come and do some training with our community builders. So yeah, please uh, email Tracy or me or Vicky, we'll be able to put you in touch with us for that. Um, and so, yeah, thank you very much. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I um, hope you've uh, found out everything you wanted to know about ABCD. Um, so I'd like to say thank you to our speakers and thank you to all our community builders that came along today. And um, thank you to all of you for coming along. And now I'm going to hand over to Vicky to conclude our webinar. Thank you, Marianne, and thank you so much to everybody. And for those of you that are still with us, I realise that we've run over a little bit. So uh, I appreciate if, if you are still here, but I've recorded the Q&A um, section as well. So I can share that with everybody that's been today. So this concludes our webinar series. It's been a fantastic finale. We've had a little bit of fun in the middle, um, but we got there in the end and um, it was a really inspiring session. Thank you. And I know that you'll be joining us um, as part of our programme in May with lots of amazing interactive workshops around ABCD. There's some fabulous stuff coming up. So uh, we will be sharing that programme with you and you will have the opportunity to come back and um, and share um, tour based learning with them around asset based community development. So there's lots more to, to come. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Once again, I'm going to uh, end the session now. We've, we've, we've bang on an hour. So uh, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for staying with us and hope to see you at the Festival of Learning in a few weeks time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.